ब्रह्मानंदम परम सुखदम केवल ज्ञान मूर्ति द्वंद्वातीत गगन सदृश तत्व नित्यम विमलमचल सर्वधी साक्षिभूत भावातीत त्रिगुणरहित सद्गु तम नमामि सहनावतु सहनौ भुनक्तु सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिदिषा वह ओं शाति 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 हरि ओं श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओं समस्तजन कल्याण निरत करुणा नमा चिन्मय देव सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर सद्गु ब्रह्म विद्वर सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यम अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा श्रुतिस्मृतिपुराण आल करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्रभाषकृत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः सर्वेदात सिद्धांत गोचर तम गोचर गोविंद परमानंद सद्गु प्रणतस्म्यहम सद्गु प्रणतस्म्यहम so we are, we are on we are doing what is called officially is the panchakosha viveka a methodology that is used uh, one of the one of the methods that is used to realize the supreme self uh, this uh, this comes from taitri upanishad that's because every upanishad uses a different uh, method to explain the same brahman to the student and one of those methods is the panchakosha viveka so the discrimination of the five sheets we have seen the five sheets to be the anamaya the pranamaya manomaya vidyanamaya and anandamaya and the discrimination of the sheets is in the form of negating them because it is said that atman or brahman is hidden in the cave of the koshas hidden nihitam guhayam it is hidden in the cave so how do you go to, into that cave is by negating all the sheets because these sheets are as though covering the atman as though eva it cannot the sheets can never cover the atman like the clouds can never cover the sun but it appears like that because i think of myself to be one or other of the koshas okay and that's why and that's why bhagwan has taken up this inquiry sheet by sheet he is going up through this so he did anamaya he did um, pranamaya and now we we are on the manomaya and you will notice that manomaya has the maximum verses explanation because it is the most difficult uh, sheet to conquer because it is what is playing all the havoc mind is the one that is the problem body is not a problem body is inert pranas are also inert but knowledge appears in the mind and that's where the problem begins uh, vidyanamaya kosha also is not that much of a problem but the mind is because it runs mind is not steady mind is fickle mind is prone to running outside with the senses and the more it runs outside um, the less chance of it recognizing itself to be brahman 
okay and that's why so many verses on the manomaya kosha uh last time we saw uh we saw a few verses where the mind when it when it is in deep sleep the world doesn't exist and apart from the mind there is no ignorance it is the mind itself which is the ignorance and it is the mind itself which can bind you which is binding us and the mind itself will release us and how does it do both if it is running outside if it is extroverted it is bondage and <clears throat> as soon as it turns inside uh, it becomes a way to liberation it becomes a means to liberation and that is why and the, bhagwan also said that it is it is this mind because of its likes and dislikes which binds us and the likes and dislikes in the mind it's because of the gunas and it binds us like a like an animal is bound to with a rope is bound to a post same way this mind binds us to this world of change sansara and as soon as we can break that rope and how do we break the rope is by going over the gunas transcending the gunas so if we can break that rope then it, the same mind will become a means to uh, liberation okay this this much we did we i think we have to start with verse 175 how do i how do i transcend the gunas this is the question now because bhagwan has said that it is because of the gunas that you're getting bound and then you are supposed to transcend the gunas then how do i make the mind introverted what is the method त्यतो बुद्धिमतो मुमुक्षः ताभ्याम दृढाभ्याम भवितव्यम अग्रे when the mind has been made pure due to a predominance of discrimination and dispassion it turns towards liberation these two must be strengthened by one who is an intelligent seeker of liberation so we come back to viveka and vairagya vairagya will not come unless there is viveka viveka has to come first discrimination unless i know that something is false unless i know that something is an illusion why would i let go of it as long as i keep thinking that the body is real as long as i keep thinking that the mind is real i am real why would i let go of it so the first step is to have viveka and vairagya are two wings we need both to take this flight into liberation how a bird cannot fly with one wing even the plane has two wings to balance so just like that we also need these two wings of one by viveka one by ragya one side viveka one side by ragya and viveka it will be made pure by viveka why because once i come to know that this world is an illusion i will not run after it i will reduce my likes and dislikes i will tone them down they will not bother me as much not that i don't have any likes or i don't have any dislikes at all that, that is not the point the point is that i have the like but it doesn't bother me if i don't get something which i like it doesn't bother me if something comes to me which i dislike that is the main thing it should not disturb the mind likes and dislikes should not disturb and and the way this happens is by developing more sattva so reducing rajas and tamas and that also is a viveka that i need to develop more sattva and also it is a viveka why do i want to develop sattva is because if so there is that big if if i want freedom complete freedom from the thraldom of sansar what is sansar a realm of change every time there is change i get uncomfortable i'm uncomfortable i don't like change right so and this sansar is nothing but change so that's why we are constantly uncomfortable so if we want to be comfortable then we need to change ourselves because you cannot change the world please remember that there's no way that we can change the world it is going to remain the same it is the same for a realized master it is the same for a spiritual seeker it is the same for an ignorant person only their reactions to that world are different the ignorant thinks that the world is real runs after it the seeker has now heard that the world is not very real and tries to control that's where we are so we should try and the realized master 
the world doesn't even exist for him. So it doesn't matter. So here, this is what he's saying. When there is a predominance of these two qualities, but this dispassion will only come after discrimination. So discrimination is first. Then, then he can he's ready to take this flight into, uh, into liberation. Okay, so that's why the importance of Viveka in Tattvabodh also we saw that first it is Viveka, then Vairagya, then Shat Sampati, then Mumukshutva. So first you get Viveka, when you get dispassion, automatically the Shat Sampati will come. See, when you're dispassionate, automatically the senses will quieten. When the senses quieten, the mind will quieten. Then there will be patience, titiksha, there will be shraddha, faith, sattva. The more the sattva, more the faith. Rajas gives doubts. So faith doesn't come easily. Because rajasic person, people, will there will be constant doubting of what is being said. And then in that constant doubting, the knowledge cannot arise. And that's why they are considered impurities. Rajas and tamas are impurities. Sattva is alone, the purity. Okay. All right. The, the mind has to be transcended. Okay. And that is the way to transcend it. Mano nama maha vyagro. No. When they change the meter, okay, let me think. Um, this is Anushtu straight. Can somebody help me out here? Tripti, Anushtup, it is straight Anushtup. Nitya, are you there? Chitra? Straight, Dharm, okay, I got it. It's like Dharma Kshetra, uh, Kurukshetra. Mano nama maha vyagro vishayaranya bhumishu charat this is the simplest meter. A huge tiger called mind prowls in the thick jungles of sense pleasures. Let not those virtuous people who have a deep aspiration for liberation ever wander therein. So Bhagwan is giving an example. It's like the tiger who is prowling in the forest. So the forest is of the sense pleasures. Means what? Means the objects of the world. Means the world itself. So this tiger, this tiger, which is the mind, for us it is our mind, it is prowling. What, it, what does it mean it is prowling? It is going extroverted. It is going out through the senses. So every time there is color and form, the mind is getting attracted to it, to sound, to smell, to taste, to touch. And so the the people who really want liberation, so us spiritual seekers who are really after liberation, need to control this tiger, need to control the mind. That's the importance of mind. Therefore, even control of the mind, people underestimate um, this, um, this practice. The sadhana of controlling the mind is very, very important. It is it is right at the start that we have to start doing this. It's a, it's a beginning sadhana. It is not later on that I will get control of the mind. This mind needs to be controlled right from the beginning. Otherwise, it will eat you. It will literally. That's why the tiger example is given. What does the tiger do? Tiger literally eats you. That way, this this mind will eat eat you in the sense it will take you down. It will take you into um, sense uh, pleasures. See, long time back, you know. Uh, when I first came to this country, uh, there was a, a, a real, real story that happened. So anyway, this guy, two stories I know like this. So this one person won a lottery. And that time it was like, I don't know, whatever it was, it wasn't millions and millions, but whatever it was, the, the first prize, maybe one million, maybe whatever. And in those days, like 30, 40 years ago, that was a lot of money. And he won. And then his story came in the paper. He said he he only remembers he won the lottery and then the the three years after that he doesn't remember. And then after the third year, when he sort of you know like woke up to what was happening, he had lost his wife, family, house, everything. He was on the streets. 
So he just went into a drinking binge and he said three, three years, he, he just doesn't know what he did with the money. That is what this is. This is. There's the, also I had read about a lady from a very good family, rich family, two children, real story. This is in North Van. This man was back east somewhere, Toronto. This woman, she went for a party and then somebody gave her this drug ecstasy. And she said, after that, the, when she woke up, she had nothing. She had, she had no husband, no children, no house, no nothing. In the sense, woke up means she got so addicted to it that she couldn't come out of it again. Okay, that is what this verse is saying. That's why the tiger, it will eat you. It will leave you with nothing if you let the mind lose, under, not under control. And therefore, if we want liberation, that is the first thing that we need to do is to control the mind. Mana prasute vishayan sheshan stulatmana sukshmataya cha bhoktuhu sharira varna shramajati bhedat guna kriyahe tu falani nityam. The mind continuously delivers for the experiencer all sense objects, gross or subtle, without exception, distinctions based upon body, caste, order of life and creed, as well as the difference of qualities, actions, motives and results. See, the, the mind is continuously delivering for the experiencer. So last, uh, last week we discussed I mowed the lawn, that I, which is the small I, which is the ego, which is the experiencer, the mind is delivering all this. Why? Because mind has knowledge. I told you, knowledge begins at the level of the mind. There is no knowledge at the level of the pranas. There is no knowledge at the level of the body. So the body cannot deliver anything. The pranas cannot, they don't have the knowledge. They only just uh, work. Whatever is to be done, they just do. Body, whatever the mind tells the body to do, the body will do. Whatever the pr pranas need not be told. They are just programmed to do their functions. So they just go on doing it 24-7. That's why the body rests. The mind says, okay, now let's rest. Then the body can rest, but the pranas never rest. So, so the, all these things are being done by the mind. So what is it being done? All the, uh, all the sense objects, gross and subtle. Subtle means in thought form. So... You know, I, I, I can go on imagining, oh, now now after COVID, Cineplex will start. Then I will go for a movie. I have not seen a movie for so long. Party. I will have a party now once all the things come back. To, that, that's the subtle. It is bringing in subtle thought. That is subtle. It means only in my mind I'm thinking. Plus, there are the gross objects outside. So I see, I go to the mall and I see objects. And then I want to buy and all that. And then distinctions based upon body. Who is telling me that I am taller than the other person? Who is telling me that I'm more beautiful? I'm shorter, I'm fatter, I'm richer, I'm poorer. It's mind is doing it. Anamaya kosha and pranamaya kosha are not doing these things. Pranamaya kosha doesn't tell me my digestion is better than her digestion. That is not there. But is definitely telling me that I am better looking than that person. I am more rich than that person. So these distinctions, all this is created by the mind. This is what Bhagwan is trying to tell. There is actually no distinction between her and me from the highest standpoint. But this mind is the one that is creating these distinctions. And they keeping it. This is how the ego keeps itself alive. By creating the distinctions, the ego is alive. If the distinctions are merged, the ego cannot stand. The ego cannot stand on its legs, on two legs. The ego can never stand, but it, it tries to by creating these differences. And this is what it is. So caste, order of life, you know, I'm of a higher caste. In India, it is there more, um, you know, order of life. I'm better creed as well as the difference of qualities, actions, motives, right? I'm very sattvika. Huh? That person is very large. Say, oh, look how tamas <laughs> are coming in the mind. Mind is telling me. So all these things, motives, I, I did with good intentions, but that, you know, it looks like a good action, but motive, motive is not good. At that. Every time it's only my motive is very good. Everybody else's motive is not good. All this thing is being done by the mind. That's why I'm saying mind is playing havoc. Mind is imagining things that even our worst enemy doesn't imagine. So mind only imagines this will happen, that will happen, this is what I will do, that will I, what I will do, etc., etc. 
motives and results and therefore th this is being constantly delivered to the experiencer and the experiencer should know that this this is the uh, games played by the mind so i shouldn't get caught up in this see even if that's why last time also i told you like shivji if we hear anything we have to keep it in our throat why any negative we don't swallow because if we what is the meaning that we don't swallow means if we take it to heart then we will have negative feelings towards that person or if we spit it out means we go tell everybody oh that person that person did this 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 that is what is you you need to be able to control it okay so this is this is what the mind is doing constantly that's why bhagwan is saying that the mind is constantly changing and doing all this understand the mind how can you transcend how can you conquer how can you uh, win over your enemy or any other person without knowing the enemy knowledge is important now see even in a game don't they tell the suppose if it's a baseball game or a cricket game doesn't the batter know what kind of bowler that guy is because that bowler is from the other other team so he's sort of your enemy so you should know his prowess then you can win the game that he is like this so i should be like this so the mind is like this so then what should i do that's why bhagwan is telling all this detailed explanation on how the mind is okay it is mind is very very important because why because that is the way to liberation that is what will bind us that's why it becomes extremely important body and pranas are, body is important in the sense that to do your sadhana and all you need a healthy body but body is not playing any kind of havoc body is not telling us anything body doesn't say i am taller than that one you know i'm shorter than that the body doesn't say anything mind does okay <laughs> असंगचिद्रूपमुं विमोह्य देहेन्द्रिय प्राणगुणर्निबद्ध अहम ममेती भ्रमय त्यजस्त्र मन स्वृत्ते शुफलोपभुक्तिषु अनटैश्ड प्योर इंटेलिजेंस इज द एसेंस ऑफ द जीवा but the mind beguiles it and binds it by ties of body sense organs and pranas it causes this jiva to wander with the idea of i and mine in the varied experiences of results gathered by itself so unattached pure intelligence indicates the absolute reality brahma okay unattached that's why first asanga shruti describes brahman as asanga it is not attached to anything pure pure shuddha nitya shuddha buddha mukta that is the description of brahman right so pure very very without any blemish at all and intelligence indicating knowledge consciousness satchit and ananda so this is the essence of the jiva who is the jiva this experiencer i the small i in actuality is the big i that's what bhagwan is saying that's what everybody says bhagwan krishna also says the same thing in in bhagavad gita mamai vausho jiva loke this jiva is my ausha is actually jiva is not even ausha it is he is jiva only jiva is him but what is happening is this mind is coming in between and the mind beguiles it mind is treacherous see we have said that right mind is very treacherous it fools us to think that i am separate that is the thing of the ego i am separate you are separate i am good you are bad i am this you are that this differences in um, tulsi Tul, uh, tulsi ramayan uh, lakshman asks Uh, there is a dialogue between shri ram and lakshman and it's called as ram gita also there not this not the ram gita from adhyatma ramayan but this is from tulsi ramayan and lakshman of the question, five questions he asks one of the questions is what is maya lakshman asked shri ram what is maya and bhagwan replies maya is me and you that is maya where i see the difference i am here and you are there that itself is maya because there is no i and there is no you there is only one the big i 
but the small i the mind beguiles me fools me into thinking that this person or this object or this world is something other than me and how does it do it by identifying with the body see only when i identify with the body everything else becomes different so this idea of i and mine now in uh, bhagavad gita chapter 12 it will come tomorrow um nirmamo bhagwan says the one of the characteristics of uh, the bhakta the nyani bhakta it's nyanottara bhakti in chapter 12 that we study he says nyan nyani bhakta is nirmama so this i and mama is what mine okay now how will the mind come unless there is the aham unless there is the i see this is me therefore this computer is mine the mind cannot come mama cannot come without aham remember that now what is aham what is aham ham means to destroy kill ham that which can be destroyed and aham when you put the prefix a it becomes opposite that which can never be destroyed okay so the real meaning of aham is that big i that pure consciousness which can never be destroyed except the mind has beguiled me has fooled me into thinking that this aham is this body mind intellect now what has happened is that aham which is which is the pure intelligence is considered to be this limited body okay now when this aham is this body body mind intellect equipment then this house is mine children are mine family is mine now what happens is because of this i this mine is created and then i and mine and that is maya that is ignorance that is avidya so bhagwan is saying the nanotara bhakta is nirmama he has no mind which means what means that small aham he has dissolved he has dissolved himself into the big aham now see when i expand see how aham starts is first i'm single alone that is my aham you know i i'm looking after myself and that's it then i get married then aham becomes me and my husband then i have two children then aham becomes me husband and two children then this this is aham and then everything everybody else other families and all is mama now i expand the ham swami shantanand ji had long time back he had come and he had given a very beautiful example he says you take an elastic band you know in your hand and you expand you expand 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 at one point it's going to snap right so this limited aham is it is like that elastic band so this only this much is aham who is this me my husband and my children that's it that's it. there's nobody else that's aham now everything outside of this circle is mama it's mine this house this everything right now i expand so i say that um it's not only my family uh but my in my case i can say this whole building is aham so i look after the welfare of the entire building okay i can expand it this whole neighborhood is aham i can expand it this whole bc is aham i shall pray for the entire bc then i can expand it to country i can expand it to the earth so what i'm doing is i'm expanding that uh, elastic band and in in from in vedantic terms not only just this body but i am that ultimate aham which is including the entire universe i am actually that aham which is the substratum of the entire universe where is the question of mama how can there be mama when i am that big i i am supporting everything right from the blade of grass to brahma ji can there be any mama there cannot be mama mama comes only with aham and aham is mistaken to be this body mind intellect and this this is what bhagwan is saying here causes it call it the mind causes this jiva to wander with the idea of i and mind wander with the idea means what i is only this much that's it everything beyond this is mine 
So there's a difference. But if I expand this I, this aham, if I expand, because aham, if it is correctly understood, that which can never be destroyed. So body can be destroyed. So how body will be aham? Mind is destroyed. In sleep, only body and mind are dis disappearing. But how it will be aham? If I can understand that, that is the viveka. That is the discrimination. If I can have that, then I can become nirmama. Then that is the bhakta lakshana. So this, uh, in the varied experience, results gathered by itself. Okay. So this difference of me and mine is created by the mind. Ultimately by the ego, but right now by the mind. So that is what needs to be understood. Okay. Clear? Any questions? Everybody's clear? Good. Adhyasa dosha purushasya sanskriti hi adhyasa bandhas tvamunaiva kalpitaha rajas tamodo shavato vivekinaha janmadi dukhasya nidana metata. The evil of superimposition causes man's tra transmigration, and the mind alone is responsible for the bondage of superimposition. For a man who is tainted with rajas and tamas and who lacks discrimination, this causes the misery of birth, etc. So we have come back to adhyasa. I've told you that without adhyasa, without the principle of superimposition, Advaita Vedanta cannot stand. Adhyasa also is very, very important. And with it comes our most famous example of rope and snake. I have told you, do not let go of rope and snake. Hold it to your chest. Hold it. To, it is going to come again and again. So let's see. Adhyasa dosha purushasya sausriti. The evil dosha here is evil, defect. There is a defect of adhyas. There is a defect of superimposition happening. Okay. And we have discussed this many times. I walk into the room. The room is not very, very well lit. There is, I see a snake in the corner and I am afraid. And then my friend walks in and turns the light on and says, hey, look, don't be afraid. It is not a snake. It is a rope. Okay. Simple superimposition. Now, also in the verse that I read to you, which I had done in, in the ashram, I told you that adhyasa superimposition cannot happen in the domain of complete ignorance or complete knowledge. If I walk in and it's pitch dark in the room, will I even see the rope? Will I even superimpose then? I don't even see the rope. How I will superimpose anything? I don't see anything, which is fine. Ignorance is bliss. And if I walk into the room and it's fully lit, very bright light, will I not see the rope as a rope? No problem. No problem. Superimposition happens only in the middle, where there is not complete darkness or there is not complete light. And in our case, what is happening is, I think there is complete light because I mowed the lawn. That's why I told you, there is a dark theater in the waking world. Because I don't know who that I is. I think that I, that aham, is the body, mind, intellect. Okay? That is the ignorance. And because that original avidya, the ignorance is there, that I am not the body, mind, intellect. I am the supreme reality. I superimpose reality on the world. So what is happening between rope and snake is exactly happening with us also. So the rope is giving existence to the snake. See, I say the rope is, the snake is. The is and is is same. The rope exists, the snake exists. While I'm seeing it in dim light, the snake is existing for me. So the rope is giving existence to the snake and the snake is giving its shape to the rope its qualities to the rope. So there is mutual superimposition happening, actually. It is Ananya Adhyas, it is called. Mutual, so there is both ways superimposition. One is giving existence to the snake. The rope is giving existence to the snake. And the snake is giving its shape to the rope. So what is happening in my case is, the existence is coming from the big eye. Okay? And the shape is coming from the body. And therefore, the experiencer eye says, I am tall or thin or short. I'm compassionate. I'm cruel. 
whatever. So these, these attributes are being superimposed on the Supreme Self. The Supreme Self is near, neither fat nor thin, nor compassionate, nor cruel, nor nothing, no attributes. But now all these attributes, like the snake is poisonous, and Gurudev will describe, oh, it was rattling also, I heard a noise also. Everything, you know, in Gurudev's words, Gurudev, then you will describe all this, right? So all these attributes I superimpose on the supreme reality and the existence I am getting from the supreme. So there is mutual superimposition. That is a dosha. That is a defect. Okay. So both are giving something to the other. Rope is giving its existence to the snake. Snake is giving its shape to the rope. So the experiencer I, the small I, in Gurudev's words, is getting the existence from the supreme reality and it is getting the shape from the body, the emotions from the mind and whatever honesty, the values from the intellect. This is how this mutual superimposition is happening. And that is a defect. That is a defect. And the reason it is happening is because I do not have the complete tube light that I am that supreme reality. So complete light is not there. Okay, is there complete darkness? It, because superimposition would not happen. There would be complete darkness if I were to say I am not existing. Is I can say all of you are not existing. Can anyone if you claim that I am not existing, I am not here. But nobody is claiming that. So we all know we are existing. The problem is, I think I'm existing as the body, mind, intellect. That is the problem. That's what this is. And then because of this superimposition, mutual superimposition, I'm considering myself to the body. Then when I consider myself to be the body, the body is doing actions. I'm taking ownership of those actions. And then the results of those actions are coming. Then it is going to bind me into transmigration in, because the result of that action may or may not be experienced in this life. So I'm cre I've created a blueprint for the next life that is coming under vasanas now. That is how I am creating vasanas is because of the mutual superimposition. So Viveka has to be done that I am not this experiencer. And it will come when you have faith first and, and studies. So this, for a man who is tainted with Rajas and Tamas, so the one who has more impurities will do more superimposition. When there is impurity, I really think I did it. It was real. How do you call it a dream? That is the point. How do you call it a dream? I did, I did it. I planned my day. I did it. Okay. And that Janma Adi Dukhasya. Janma Adi, birth, and then there is actions, result Adi, etc., etc., etc. Dukhasya, this causes misery of birth. Birth is, you know, when actually there's a birth, we are happy, happy, happy. But the jiva is uh, coming into this uh, sansara, which is a realm of change. And realm of change is always misery. We get uncomfortable now with change. Uh, uh, it, it, after even, you know, this is how superimposition works. I have so much studying, like so-called I have done. And my our strata agent changed. You know, I mean, he got a better job. We got another. But when he said, when I read that in my WhatsApp message, we got a message saying that so-and-so has left. I'm like, I hate change. That's what I wrote the message. <laughs> Why did he leave? Because he got so comfortable. The last three years, you know, Calvin do this, Calvin do this. And now suddenly Calvin is gone, right? And I'm like, where did he go? Why did he go? <laughs> right? And I thought, Okay, Jaya, calm down. Change, that is change. But it makes us uncomfortable. Makes us uncomfortable. That's, that is the Dukkha. Because people might think, what is the Dukkha? I've got a very happy life. I was born in a good family. I've got a good education. My life is going good, good, good. And that's what people think. And, that, 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 and then they, 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 they say, don't want this knowledge also. What is the use? What is the use? They're saying, oh, this is, world is a dream. What do you mean? They don't. So they don't even have that understanding. It, it requires, that's why they say it requires that Bhagavan himself said now that human birth is very rare and it requires great merit to come into this knowledge. 
so if you are interested in this knowledge and is listening please please remember that you all of you have done a lot of merit in the past sometime otherwise you don't get to hear even this knowledge and even if you hear it never goes into your head so if it is even penetrating a little bit consider it to be your good fortune okay okay Any questions what is the origin of the word uh, adhyasa like how is Ad the brain adhyasa form? Adhyasa is superimposition. Now, how is the word uh, formed? Like, what is the breakup of the Adhyasa? A breakup of Adhyasa, I don't know. Okay. It is the word for superimposition. Mm, and and uh, Bhagwan Shankaracharya's commentary on the Brahma Sutras is actually called as Adhyasa Bhashya. Commentary on Adhyasa it is. Without superimposition, we cannot prove Advait Vedanta. We are saying that this world is a, is a superimposition on the reality. But the break of the word, I don't know. Okay. Ata prahurmano vidyam pandita statva darshinaha yenai vabhramyate vishvam vayu nevam brahmandalam. Hence, the mind is considered to be avidya by sages who have discovered its secret. By this alone, the universe of experience is tossed around like the clouds by the wind. So the learn, learned sages, I told you, the learned sages, the subjective scientists, as Gurudev called them, they did research subjectively. They went within themselves. The objective scientists do research outside and they make life comfortable. They increase <clears throat> the standard of living. Standard of living is increased by the objective scientists, but the standard of life is increased by the subjective scientists. So if I want to increase the standard of my life, not my living, my living, yes, I've got an AC flat, I've got a car, I've got a this, I've got a that. Am I happy amidst, amidst, amidst all these comforts? And more and more you find that people are unhappy. Most people with otherwise all the rich people would have been happy only you think everybody is happy so that is where the problem comes okay your standard of living is so high you know you've got so much money you've got so much this that etc 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 what is the standard of your life what is the standard of your life so if you want to increase enhance the standard of life this knowledge is essential and when the standard of life is enhanced whatever the standard of living is you will adjust to that you will adjust to that otherwise you're unhappy and this is what happens you know i have one flat then only two bedrooms this one had got three but comparison 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 it's a life of comparison a life of comparison Life of comparison is a life of sorrow because you will, and we never look at the person who is less than us. We never, do we ever? That's why there is a saying, I cried that I had no shoes until I saw someone who had no feet. But I never do that. When I don't have shoes, I'm looking at the person who has shoes. The shoes person is looking at the one who is on the bicycle, in the car, on the plane. And then the plane person is worried income tax. How much income tax I have to pay? Hare, there is no happiness only. That's why we're looking at the glass half full, half, half empty. We constantly do that. Now you shift your vision to what I have. Count your blessings. Nah? Instead of keeping on saying, I don't have this, I don't have this, I don't. See what you have. See what you have. You know, uh, this. The, there's a story that I heard. I mean, I, I, I knew that anyway. So there was this one Mahatma was going on the bridge and then he saw this person trying to jump over the bridge. So he stopped him. He said, why are you jumping over the bridge? He said, I'm committing suicide. So he said, why? He said, I have no money. You know, I know this, that, that, that. that. So he said, uh, but you know what? Why don't I give you one lakh rupees? He said, really, you'll give me? And then he says, if I give you, then will you not commit suicide? He says, no, 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 no. Why would I, you know, give me a lakh? He said, but you have to give me something in return. He says, what do you want in return? He said, give me your two eyes. He said, no, I can't give you my eyes. Said, okay, I'll give you two lakhs. This is two lakhs. What do you what, what do you want? He said, give me your two hands. He said, no, I can't give you my two hands. Said, I'll give you five lakhs. Give me your two legs. 
No, no. So he said, but now one lakh for the eyes, two lakhs for the hands, five lakh. That means you have got seven, eight lakhs to you have in your body only. So why are you jumping off the cliff, off the bridge? We don't recognize that we have that. We go and say, I don't have money. Arey Baba, you have hands now to work. Right? So we must always focus on what I have. Then life will be content. On, so, and that focus, that, it, that is what we learn from this knowledge. The basic, you know, forget liberation. Just this basic thing, if you want to learn, this knowledge is very important. Otherwise, you will be always there. That's why yeneva brahmyate vishwam. This you will keep on getting tossed around. Tossed is what? One day happy, one day sad. One day happy, one day sad. Like the log of wood. Up. When the wave comes, down. Up, down. Up, down. That's why be like the lighthouse. Whether there is a big wave or a small wave. Lighthouse is same. Okay. Tanmana shodhanam karyam prayatne namu mukshuna vishuddhe sati chaitasmin mukshuna Therefore, the mind must be diligently purified by one who seeks liberation. When the mind has been purified, liberation becomes as readily available as a fruit in one's own hand. So the fruit in one's own hand, how certain I am of it, right? Anything I'm holding in, my, in the palm of my hand, this handkerchief, I'm very, very certain that it is there. That way, this liberation... and. Just take note of how many times he has said the mind has to be purified. How many times he has harped on this, right? It, it's very, very important. Very, very important. So that's why I said we should, once it becomes that purified, liberation will be very close. That's the whole sadhana is to purify the mind. Once you take the mind to a certain level, it will be liberation automatic. See, it's like this, you know, you cook the whole day. How long does it take you to eat that food? So the pre preparation time is more. The preparation is more difficult. The result then is, is very easy. That's why he said this. Tan, tat manaha shodhanam karyam. Shodhanam here is purification. So this karya, this uh, work of effort self-effort of purifying the mind should be taken up immediately right away and diligently being followed diligently follow it so that when it reaches a certain level of purification it will definitely give you liberation purification is removal that's a guru deva purification of the mind means removal of rajoguna and taboguna and removal never to zero percent once again i repeat but five percent two percent Less, less. You cannot take it to zero. Okay? So remo by removal, he means predominance of sattva. So I have a predominance of sattva. Okay? Mokshaika satya vishaye shuragam nirmulya sanyasya cha sarva karma sat shraddhayaya shravanadhinishto rajaswabhavam sadhunoti buddhehe with single pointed devotion for liberation, he who roots out his attachments for sense objects, renounces all actions and with faith in truth, constantly hears the truth, etc. He can purge the rajasic nature in his intellect. So single pointed devotion. So the first thing is love for the goal. Liberation is the goal. See, unless I have love, I've given you the example of the Olympic athlete who wants the gold medal. Right? If he loves that gold medal, then how much effort has he to put? So if we love the goal, we will always, why do we put in so much, you know, our little child is at home. We love that child, right? So we will do any, we'll bend over backwards to take care of that one. So when I love the goal, effort will become easy. So single pointed devotion is required. He roots out his attachments for sense objects because the attachment is coming from Rajoguna. Attachment to sense objects is coming from Rajas. So roots out attachments means reduces Rajas. Okay. And how, how, how can you root it out? By doing Viveka. That, okay, I got this object. Then I felt happy for some time. Then again, I ran after another object. And, and I'm constantly running only because I'm never finding that happiness. And why am I not finding that happiness? Because it's not there in the object. How will you find it? You'll never find it. 
you can't you can't find something in it's not there only how you will find it only this temporary pleasures we get it's like putting your finger in the socket you know electric shock little shock here little shock there that is how when the sense organs get plugged in into their sense objects there is a little you know there's a little what should i say vibration so happy and i think that is happiness but it is not it goes away it goes away it's your experience this is not shastra this is experience renounces all actions renounces all ego and egocentric actions please renouncing action doesn't mean physically giving up any action but the doership i did it that i did notion should be toned down and that's what we are studying in chapter 2 now tomorrow most important verse coming up karma nevadika rasi that's why we'll be explaining renouncing all action what is what is what does it mean to renounce action it is actually the doership and the enjoyership that has to be renounced it is not the action that needs to be renounced and with faith in truth shraddha very important if i don't even have faith that there is something like god there is something like liberation why will i go after it? i i can't go after something if I, if i don't know that it is there i will never go after it yeah ji mm -hmm. let me just complete this one sec constantly hears the truth constravanam constantly why because we forget we forget that's why so many people, when we are in class we understand but when the class finishes then we forget so constant uh, shravanam is required and that's why adhyatma nitya word comes in uh, bhagavad gita where i told you where all the experiences in the world you must be able to connect it to the divine theme all experiences that becomes adhya so here's the truth he can purge the rajasic nature of his intellect so this is how you reduce rajas because it's an impurity Yes. yes. Uh, this philosophy is pretty good, and but uh, its application in this part of the world seems quite difficult to follow. So the only answer I can find in that is that you don't think at that time you are the doer. That may reduce little bit of your. ambition or something but on the other hand when you are in that situation you have to compete you have to compare you know you are working in a whether whatever work you are doing but there is always competition there is always comparison and the more struggle take more courses go reach up go ahead unless you do that you do not go anywhere so in one at one point you may decide oh this is enough for me but at the same time when you see others who are underneath you they go ahead of you by these courses or something in that time you are disturbed a little bit sometimes more so how can you practice this thing at that time in that situation you have to decide what your goal is what is your goal if your goal is to be a ceo then yeah then go for it that's why i told you love for the goal go, see a child is there what does he decide first am i going to take science or arts or does he say no i want to become a doctor then what he say oh if i want to become a doctor then i have to take science if i have to become a whatever you know then i have to take this so the goal gets decided first do i want to be happy? and goal i'm not talking even liberation do i want to increase the standard enhance the standard of life or do i want to enhance the standard of living if i want to enhance the standard of living go for it go for the competition go jao na nobody is saying no decide the goal that's why the love for the goal once you decide the goal no i want peace of mind i want my life to be you know quality of life has to be there then then the effort will be in that direction the goal will decide where the effort is to be the goal is that then effort has to be put in that then you then let let them be competition fight this that jealousy anger all that and then you are at peace with that okay fine then fine nobody is saying no goal is very very important and therefore shastra has given us the goal that the ultimate goal is liberation 
Shastra has given it. I am not giving it. I, I don't know. You can have whatever goal that you want. You want your standard of living to increase? Please go fight in the world. Go fight. No problem. No problem. Okay. Om Swasti Prajapya Paripala Yantam Nyayana Margena Mahim Mahishaha Go Brahmane Bhyashuvamastu Nityam Loka Samasta Sukhinobha Vantu Kale Varshatu Parjanyaha Prithivisasya Shalini Desho Yamksho Bharaita Brahmana Santu Nirbhayaha Om Sarvesham Swasti Bhavatu Sarvesham Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramayaha Sarve Bhadra Prani Pashantu Makashit Dukhabhag Bhavet Oma Satoma Sad Gamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya Amrityorma Amratam Gamaya Om Purna Madhav Purna Midam Purna Purna Mudachate Purna Sya Purna Madha Ya Purna Meva Avashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Hari Om everybody